This is the second video in the series where I teach you Turkish grammar from zero. In this one, we're going to look at existence and we're going to use the locative case suffix. In the first video, we looked at vowel harmony and in this one, we're going to use vowel harmony and on top of that, we're going to learn how to tweak consonants in Turkish. There's this thing called consonant alternation in Turkish, so we're going to take a look at that. And if you haven't seen the first video, go and check it out first and then you can come back to this one to build on top and the link for that is in the description. Let's dive into it. Let's talk about another suffix, the locative suffix. This is the in, on, at equivalent of Turkish and we use it to talk about locations. It has four variations and those are de, da, te, ta. Let's look at some examples and then we will examine these variations. Otopark ta araba var. So var is there is or there are. So there are cars in the car park. Orada bir ev var. There is a house. Parkta ağaç var. There are trees or a tree in the park. Parkta çocuk yok. There are no children in the park. Evde yemek yok. There's no food at home. And previously we said that we needed to look at the vowels in the words to determine what suffix we needed to use, what version of the suffix that we needed to use. And if you look here, we did exactly the same as in the plural suffix. Ev, e is a front vowel. <clears throat> so we used the front vowel version, which is evde of the suffix. And cafe, cafe de, front vowel, okul, back vowel, okulda, yemek, yemekte. So these are evde, at home, cafe de, at the cafe, okulda, at school, yemekte, at lunch or at dinner. Yemek means food, but we use it like this as well. So if you look here, there's another thing you may have noticed, which is that we used a different version of the suffix when we said yemekte. And that is because of something called consonant alternation. We have unvoiced consonants in Turkish, and these are the ones that you can see here. These are unvoiced. And the reason why we call these unvoiced is because if you touch your throat with your hand and say these consonants, pronounce these consonants, go you cannot feel a vibration in your throat. So they, they don't make a vibration, a voice. Whereas the voiced consonants like b, j, d, g, you can feel a vibration in your throat. So, if there is an unvoiced consonant at the end of a word, such as in kitab, book, we need to use the unvoiced version of the suffix, kitabta. And we're still looking at the vowel as well as the consonant if the word ends in an unvoiced consonant. Yemek, unvoiced consonant, yemekte, for food, at, at lunch, at dinner. Because it's easier to say yemekte instead of yemekte. That requires more movement from the mouth if we say yemekte with a d, d, d sound. <clears throat> and then çocuk, çocukta, park, parkta. So çocukta is, is um, in the child, but um, we can sometimes use this like 
for example, telefon çocukta, the child has the phone. Keep in mind, we still look at both the vowel and the consonant if there is an unvoiced consonant at the end of a word. Okay. We can ask questions. We can say parkta ne var? So what's in the park? A parkta arch var. There are trees in the park. If the neler yok. What things are missing? What what do we not have at home? What's not at home? And we said if the yemek yok, su yok. There's no food, no water at home. Maybe we need to buy some. And we can talk about locations as opposed to the existence of things. And we do that by just using the locative at the end of the location word. So, Ali, evde, Ali's at home. Çocuklar parkta, kedi bahçede. The cat is in the garden, kedi bahçede. Çocuklar parkta, the kids are in the park. Did you know that the full course has assignments, vocab, exercises, everything? There's even a bit of listening and speaking exercise thingy there. You can find the link for that in the description. And it's actually cheap, I think. And uh, it's good for value. Check it out.